Guys, there's no YouTube voice, all right? It's the same voice every single time. You've heard it a thousand times. It's just boring. What's up YouTube, Mr. La Messi here, and today I want to talk a little bit about the history of currency in Diablo 2. Um, I'm going to go back as far as I can kind of date and try and give you guys a little bit of the understanding of how things evolved, why things evolved in certain ways, things like that. So when I first really started playing, going way back to early 2000s, the currency in the game was perfect skulls, if you can believe it. Um, this is because you could use perfect skulls to re-roll, right? You get six perfect skulls in a cube with a diadem or whatever, and you can re-roll the rare, and people liked re-rolling. And so the perfect skull was the currency back then. Now, was this before or after, like, hex charms and white rings and, and that sort of stuff kind of existed? And was a currency as well for a little bit. I can't exactly remember. Um, but I do remember Perfect Skulls being the currency. Now, after that, I remember going to bed. And waking up one morning. And all of a sudden, SOJs had been mass duped. And everybody shifted into SOJs becoming the currency for everything. Basically, it was like, all right. SOJs now exist, and they're everywhere, and it's all over the place, and it's always a wanted item for every single character, basically. And that just kind of became the currency from there. And so, you know, it'd be like, hey, I've got a win force for 40 SOJs. Trades like that were the thing, because remember back then, win force was like the best bow that you could get. It was selling for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars on eBay and all sorts of stuff. Um, and so that was really one of the that was one of the trades I can remember was like Wind Force was worth like 40 SOJs or whatever it was. Um, and so yeah, it took a while to fill the trade window up with it all and all of that stuff, but that was how we went at that time. And so you had, you know, kind of those like big ticket items right there, but the SOJs were kind of the currency. Additionally, again, I can't remember the exact timeline of when it intersected, but there was a time where 100 poison damage small charms were currency, uh, 290 poison damage small charms were currency, 320 20 small charms were currency. Um, yeah, I said the white rings and the hex charms had currency at some point values. Oculus rings never were really like currency exactly but they were just kind of a glitch thing that you know you would trade like 40 sojs for one oculus ring or whatever it was that was probably also another one of those um but those charms and those pieces kind of had their currency moments as well the poison damage ones because poison damage actually used to be better and then it kind of got like nerfed essentially um and so it used to be really strong so people would fill up their entire inventories with poison damage charms and that was kind of the like thing to do right and you could actually just have massive damage and just be really disgusting um and so yeah so that existed and then like i said the three 2020s uh which also of course got mass duped and that became a currency because again everybody won three 2020s for all of those different builds that they were running so that kind of was the currency piece there then um i would really say sojs kind of held it down for a long time that was kind of your standard currency for a good amount of time with diablo 2 but then there was a shift into and this is what i kind of want this video to be and where it kind of came to mind for me is high runes right and first it kind of went to ist runes and ist runes are still kind of used as a valued currency, right? They're that rune that you can go and get uh, with the forge, whatever it is, um, you know, and the, with the countess, and they have just such a good value across because everybody loved ist runes, right? You can just use them in so many good rune words, and they're so perfect for magic finding, which everybody, of course, loves. So ist runes 
kind of held up a really nice value, and a lot of people would value things in how many istruns it was worth. And like I said, that still kind of converts over today. People would be like, oh, Jaw is worth 16 istruns, you know, things like that. But there was also the term high rune back then, and this is where the term high rune came from. High rune was anything vex plus, and it kind of varied in its definition a little bit. There were some people that never considered it until it was like ohm plus. Some people said all the way down to like mal rune plus was high rune. Some people said goal plus, but nobody ever really liked goal. Goal like never truly had value in this game. Um, but the general accepted definition I would say was vex plus was a high rune. And there would be trades where it was just high runes for, or blank for X high runes. So I would make a trade and I'd say something like COA, two open sockets, COA, uh, you know, 15 DR, 25 res for 20 high runes. And that would be the trade. And it was any high runes within that, right? You could give me Ja Ja, Burr, Vex, Ohm, Ohm, Low, Low, Vex, Ja, right? Whatever it was, Cham, Cham, Zod, that was fine. 20 high runes all essentially had the same value, which is kind of funny because Ja Rune and Burr Rune and things like that, like, obviously have way more use than like a Cham Rune and a Zod and stuff, but there wasn't really that like valuation that really existed way, way back then, right? This isn't like a couple years ago. This is like many, many years ago. Probably like 10, 12, 13 years ago, whatever it was. So it kind of just was high rune. And that was just the value. It was just anything Vex plus. It doesn't matter. That's a high rune. So I could trade you my uh, SOJ for a Vex. Or I could trade you my SOJ for a Burr. Or for a Cham or a Zod. And it didn't matter. It was a high rune and he just had it and a lot of them were just duped anyways and so you always were perming and you had characters that were just filled with high runes and then you would join and leave a game and whatever and if you forgot to perm one time then you'd be missing like seven high runes when you rejoined the game and you're like oh no but you never like cared or noticed which ones it were and it was never a thing for the whole time right it was just like a high rune's a high rune is a high rune. Vex equals jaw equals burr equals Zod. Equal... Everything was just kind of the exact same thing. And then at some point, people started to kind of like maybe catch on, I guess. And they were like, hmm, maybe all of these high runes aren't quite exactly the same value. So there started to be kind of a separation into, into categories a little bit. So if you came in with that like Vex rune, or, you know, really was like Vex Ohm, maybe like the Cham or whatever, people would be like, that's not exactly the high rune that I want, right? They'd be like, I'm looking for kind of like better high runes. So you had kind of this combination of like Ohm, Low, Sir, Zod, Burr, uh, or Ohm, Low, Ja, Sir, Zod, Burr, maybe not even Sir, eh, maybe. You kind of had that as like your like better high runes and then your like Cham Vex was a little bit like lesser of a high rune, right? And so if you came in and, and somebody was like this for five high runes and you were like here's Cham Cham Vex Vex Ohm, they might be like, oh, do you have a couple like better high runes in there? And you could be like, ah, sure, here's a Sir and a Zod and they'd be like, okay, that's better ish or they'd be like ah oh, that's still not quite it right so there wasn't anything that was said exactly in like this is 0.5 higher and this is too you know whatever it was just that was what it was right it was just like not as great of high runes and then better high runes and then over time from there it kind of developed more where people started to extrapolate it out more and they were like you know Everybody really wants Jaw and Burr Rune, and nobody cares about Cham Rune at all. And so, and like, who's using Sir Rune for anything? No, it doesn't go in any rune words. Two Sirs equals a Burr, because that's the only thing that's actually getting use. So like, nobody actually did this math and considered all of this stuff at that time. You were just... You were just doing whatever, right? It was just like, yeah, a high rune is a high rune is a high rune. 
But eventually people started to kind of assign values to it. And so it was like, okay, well, hold on. I want the burr and you're giving me a sir and that's half of a burr. And so people started to associate this whole thing and the high rune definition kind of started to shift around. And this is where you had that high rune that existed because once again, high rune doesn't actually define any specific rune, right? Like there's no rune that is like, this is a high rune exactly. Everything was just, all of those were a high rune and then people started basing it off the value of that where they were like, okay, so, if you have a, a, a Vex, that's kind of like half of a high rune. Because people want it like half as much as they want a high rune. And like, Ohm generally kind of stayed around a high rune, but sometimes it would drop down to like 0 0.8, 0 0.75, kind of something like that. And then you'd have Low, and you'd have, you know, Sir, kind of having that greater value, and so they'd be like one and a half high runes. And things like that. And then when John Burr just kept getting better and better because more and more people realized this is all people want is John Burr. Then those became like three to four high runes each, right? In terms of their value. And Cham was like 0.25 high runes because nobody cares about Chams. Except to like, you know, you know throw in a helmet or something because ah, I'll take Cannot Be Frozen, why not? And then Zod runes were like half a high rune, right? but they were kind of a high rune sometimes as well. It just kind of fluctuated around and the values just kind of went up and down and you know, they all kind of shift here and there in relation to each other overall, but their value is still based off this arbitrary high rune that doesn't actually exist. It's just kind of where it all started when we had this base where everything was a rune that was a high rune and then people started shifting kind of off of that high rune value. And so that was just something that I was thinking about. Um, and that's kind of where we are today still, right? Is where people use the high rune and the ist runes kind of as their uh, currency overall. But this was, this was just the piece that I still, I, I was just reminded of. Because somebody was asking, they're like, what does a high rune define? And I was thinking and I was like, yeah, you know. It's not, it doesn't really, there's nothing that actually defines exactly high rune. It doesn't have like a specific thing that has that exact value. Rather, it's just the overall piece. And then I was like, wait a second. High rune didn't actually mean anything before except anything that was high, right? Just anything vexing up or whatever it was. So one high rune is not pegged directly over to anything. Ohm rune is usually the closest thing I would say. But even then, I think Omrun still kind of falls below a high rune every now and then in terms of its like overall value. Um, but it's just been a very interesting development of the currency of Diablo 2. And once again, I think back going all the way back to like perfect skulls. That was it. Like you'd go around and just collect perfect skulls. And that's how you traded for all the items that you wanted. You just traded perfect skulls. Or you traded perfect gems or chip gems. Those were the other ones. You could trade like 40 perfect gems or 40 chip gems for like an SOJ or whatever. Because people like those things for re-rolling and crafting and all that stuff. Um, so that was all of that stuff. Uh, but yeah, I always thought it was really interesting. And it's been super fun to kind of watch it develop and see how it's grown. And how like more specific and exact the community's gotten with all of this stuff. As opposed to before where everything was just like, yeah, you know. It's just like whatever. But again, when dupes were much more common and just kind of more all over the place, um, you know, then you, then you just kind of have all that stuff where, you know, people don't care as much. And also, ladder seasons were longer back then. And so there was less of the, like, constant quick turnaround where everybody has to get the John Burr to get back on to do, you know, all of that stuff, right? Um, so it was a little bit different. Uh, but, yeah. Anyways, that's just like a Mr. Llama history lesson. I'm sure there's some more pieces you guys could talk about. I'd love for people who uh, were thinking of other currency items to post those down below as well in the comments. Because, I, like I said, I remember like 3.2020s for a little bit. The poison charms, definitely. Um, you know, some of those. But I'm sure there's a couple more that I'm like forgetting that I just, 
I, I just don't remember um, really being used as that like in-game currency that we all just kind of carried around. So uh, yeah, I hope that that was fun. I hope you learned something. I hope that gives you a little bit of understanding of what Hyrule means and where it kind of came from and developed. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you guys for watching YouTube. Mwah. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace, everybody.